Good evening, everybody. My name is Jay Ponteri, and I chair the program, <laughs> the Low Residency Creative Writing Program at PNCA. And I'd like to introduce um, MFA candidate Deanna Oropesa, who's going to do introductions tonight. Thanks, Jay. Uh, reading first tonight, we have Pupe Misagi. Pupe Misagi is an assistant professor in literary arts and studies at the English Department of the University of Denver. She is a creative writer, scholar, editor, and translator between English and Persian. Her debut novel, Translating House One, was published in 2020, and her translation of Nassim Marashi's I'll Be Strong For You in 2021. Her second book, Sound Museum, is forthcoming in 2024. She has a PhD in English and Literary Arts from the University of Denver, an MA in Creative Writing from John Hopkins University, Baltimore, Maryland, and an MA in Translation Studies and a BA in Translation Practice from Azad University, Tehran. She also teaches at Pratt Institute, Brooklyn, New York, and Pacific Northwest College of Art, Portland, Oregon. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, Tyron, I'm so excited to hear you read as well. Can you all hear me well? Yeah, yeah? okay, perfect. Um, so I'm gonna read a section from um, Translating House One. Um, this is not this exact same order as um, the sections appear in the book. So um, if you have read the book or you um, decide to read it, it's not going to be the exact same thing. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. So um, just to give a bit of context and some um, summary of the book, the main um, narrative line of the book is about a woman who is going around the city of Iran trying to find um, traces of some um, sculptures and statues that um, disappeared from the public space. Um, and this is based on um, like factual events. I mean, the woman, but the fact that the statues disappeared. Um, and then throughout that search, um, we as readers also get to see other bodies disappearing in the city. Um, and the book also includes um, some meta layers as well, um, discussing what it means to do um, witness narratives and documentation of um, state crimes. Um, the section I'm gonna read is um, from um, one of the nights um, where she and her friends are going to a gallery. They all get into her car, the friend at the wheel, she in the front seat, the men in the back seat, the thinking angel too, covered in bubble wrap just to be safe, especially her wings. She sits on the lap of one of the men. Another makes them wait as he goes to grab something from his house a few blocks away. They sit and watch the people going in, coming out. He comes back inside the car, he reveals the already rolled joints. Another drinks from a plastic water bottle filled with vodka and offers it to others. Her friend starts the car and begins to drive. She in the passenger seat looks out the window. Meandering through the streets, they pass the joint around. The vodka too, she does not drink. She, lo she looks at the cars around them in traffic. When they arrive at the address they were given, the other group of friends is not yet there. They wait. 
The man bared the thinking angel, look at her, touch her. The angel sits silently, her wings made from the feathers of a once living crop, weighing on her papier-mâché body, her long fingers poised seductively in the air around her knees. Others arrive. They leave the angel in the car and with the other group walk toward the alley. It's almost empty, Friday evening, businesses closed, an old woman taking garbage out to the garbage can, leaving some food next to it for cats. A few men idling around the corner. She wants the group to move faster, but they take their time and don't care. Introductions, handshakes, kisses on cheeks. In the middle of the alley, a house, no signs. The door closed, half metal and half glass, covered with vertical bars, narrow. Someone rings the bell. Someone opens the door and welcomes them in. Inside is a narrow hallway immediately slashed by a flight of floating stairs, which begins at the end of the hallway and ascends in the direction of the door. The weight of its slanting plaster soffit pushing into the newcomers' faces. Bodies move around. Someone hands her a pamphlet, the program for the night. She glances at it without really reading. A door to the right opening toward other doors, other doors opening into large and small rooms. A door at the end of the hallway leading to a balcony and a courtyard. On the right wall, a small sign that reads, why should we leave? Where are we going? I'm staying, come. She stares at the words. From a hidden projector, the face of a young woman appears on the soffit of the staircase appears and disappears, comes to life only to fade again. The woman has a voice. She says things. Her features move. Her voice is silenced. She reads the sign again. I'm here to stay. Let me embrace you. Stay with me. People ascend and descend the stairs on top of her face. Quote. Wars, revolutions, military coups, and repressive regimes are among the circumstances that may force the formerly settled and sedate to lead picaresque and disjointed lives. Put, end of quote. Pushing them to turn into wandering characters who, due to psychological, historical, and literary or artistic reasons, quote, are little inclined to see themselves as the protagonists of life stories, end of quote. Andrews, 2014. She and her friend walk into the room on the right, an installation in the middle, boxes draped in fabric, a television on top of the boxes. A man bangs into her as he leaves the room. He doesn't say a word. She stands to one side. Ghostly words flash on the screen. The television is old. She looks at the guide in her hand. The lights are dim. She doesn't really understand the guide. Mumbling voices. A young woman's wafting perfume. She walks back to the hallway and looks for familiar faces. An old chest in the hallway that smells of aged wood, heavy with the presence of an old woman who puts things in, takes things out. She and her friend walk out to the balcony. Their, fit, their feet go beyond the threshold of the hallway and the heads of the people outside suddenly turn toward them. Curious questions in their eyes, suspicious. Colorful lanterns hang overhead from a clothesline. A few light bulbs shine in the streets in the garden below the balcony. She listens, tucking her scarf back away from her ear. She listens, hoping to pick up some names, some answers, find out what this place is, who the people are, find out why they were told to come here. Corpse 55, sherbet to drink flower petals, tears to shed. Corpse 10. All the data about the deaths compiled here can be found online, or in some cases, they could be once before they disappeared in the rabbit hole of the internet. 
This is not an attempt at investigative journalism. It is about using what any citizen can find, what has already been made available by sources from both sides, journalists, citizen journalists, human rights organizations, families, friends, and others in the form of texts, videos, audio files, photographs, etc. It's about being curious, wanting to know, and setting out on the journey of the search. Corpse 56, hushed ceremonies, prayers, videos. Black of mourning, Corpse 13. The people on the balcony are smoking. A round copper tray of now empty tea glasses and a light green crystal bowl of sugar cubes are on the table, which is the cut trunk of a once living tree. Sudden silence suddenly as if their presence now too long is an intrusion. They walk back in up the stairs. Rooms in front and to the right, a crowd waiting to come down the stairs. A woman hands her an envelope. The silent words of the face projected on the staircase reverberate in her head. Where are you going? Come. She steps into the room to the right, seats in profile, rows and rows. A few people sit and watch something on the far right wall. She looks. A journey. A train moving on the wall. The doors of a train car opening and closing. Music. People look her up and down. She sits down, constantly turning her attention from the video to the door and the people coming in or leaving in the middle of the short film that plays on repeat. Some sit on the floor. The scent of incense permeates the room. She steps into the train car, sits in front of a stranger. The train speeds out of a station. They stare into one another. The man wears the beard of an intellectual or an artist. The train moves into a tunnel and and becomes the ghost of a burlesque dancer reflected on the window behind her. And he becomes the ghost of a sculptor reflected on the window behind him. And the train moves forward in the darkness of the tunnel and she dances and he chisels and she touches him and he touches her and they breathe in one another away from the eyes of the audience. And when the train comes out the other side, of the dancer and the sculptor have separated and disappeared but their footprints remain on the windows and she and the man are still sitting staring into and beyond the windows and each other the train arrives at the station she leaves the train car she leaves the room gives her seat to a young man Quote, we are reasonable human beings, not spirits out of a manual of magic realism, not postcards for foreign consumption and abject masquerade. In other words, we are beings who have the historic chance of opting for freedom and also, paradoxically, life. End of quote, Bologna, 2011. Bodies falling, bodies lying, bodies carried, bodies buried. I want to take her aside and talk to her, tell her some things, prepare her for the moment of revelation to come. I want to talk to her about how cities are spilling over their historical containers, becoming fluid amalgamations of the good and evil of various cities and landscape, real and fictional, local and global, past and present and future, natural and artificial composites of the heavens and underworlds. I want to speak to her about how in these cities that are sites of our modern nomadic lives, those who become detectives in search of answers can only fail and arrive at more questions. And I want to say that in their failures, they are the new flanners of our exploded, decentered world, setting out on searches they'll dedicate their lives to, but becoming so enamored with life 
or drowned by waves of histories that they'll never arrive at what they intended to find. And I want to point out to her that in their loose wanderings, they come to be seen as criminals too, displaced by the interrelations of their lives and the lives of the cities. And I want to remind her that even so, it's all okay. That the only thing that matters is to keep wondering, to keep searching, to keep asking questions, to become the questions, to aim to create not a map that leads to arrival, but a map for getting lost deep in the city. I want to embrace her and hum a calming melody in her ear because I know, and you might know too, that in these cities, the fates of the ones searching might not be very different from the fates of the ones they search for. I'm just going to end here. Hey, okay, thank you. Do we get it? Oh. Thank you, Pupé. Thank you. Thanks, Pupé. Thanks for being here. Um, up next reading, we have Tyrone Williams. Tyrone Williams is the David Gray Chair of Poetry and Letters at SUNY Buffalo. He is the author of several chapbooks and seven books of poetry, CC, On Spec, The Hero Project of the Century, Adventures of Pi, Howl, As Is, Wash Park with Pat Clifford, and Stilettos in a Rifle Range. A limited edition art project, Trump Louis, was published by Hostel Books in 2017. He and Jean Huving edited an anthology of critical essays inciting poetics. His website is at www.flummoxedpoet.com. Thank you. Thanks, Pupé. I appreciate that. So I was going to do um, read some newer work, but um, I forgot I was on my uh, on my laptop, and this new one doesn't have the um, the new work. So I'm going to read um, probably three pieces. Um, the first is from um, How, which was published in 2000. 11 um and we were talking uh we've been talking in our workshop um about dreams um and memories and so i'm just going to read the introduction to a section called aunt sally um and uh earlier today allison was talking about dream books and um in detroit when i grew up um aunt sally was the it was called the aunt sally dream book and it was a very popular book in the black uh, communities. Uh, people used to play the numbers, to gamble, and so forth. So I'm just going to read, um, um, the, again, the introduction to this uh, very short introduction uh, called Splanth, um, in which I imagine that the Aunt Sally Dow, uh, which I could talk about you know, at some other point, I guess, is actually a reincarnation of Harriet Tubman. A dead man made me dow, just so they'd know. Roots she hums in other words. Buried him, then me, in the self same mud. Anything but banana name. Dead man made, cackles, wiping my spit from her face will do, just so they'd know. 10 years of say so, a decade plus of say so, back to basket sky. A dead man said me, 
Thou carry on carry of Harriet Ross, just so they know. Coming 19 years before Wood would feel as felt. Hand over my gun, gun, I say. What will will no longer be? Handed bandana, pipe, and grin. Aunt Sally, what think? So the next two pieces I'm going to read. So I've got multiple things open here. Uh, this is from my 2018 book. Um, let's see if I can get this going right. Sorry. <clears throat> so as is, is a, a book in, that's in general also about archives. Um, but it's also about libraries. It's, it's about um, Black Revolution. Um, it's about a number of different, different things. So the first poem I'm going to read is called um, B Baraka. And that's B, small b, and then capital B uh, Baraka for Amiri Baraka. And it's in different sections. Let's see if I can read. Remember. Sorry. B. Baraka, one. Take a seat, says B to B, the flat plane of instruction, a tier above the floor of worship. Though from a bird's nest swaying side to side with prejudice, the shore is both the start and end of water, then land. And every seat's an ottoman if one envisions another seat nearby, one with backing, and so a chair. Or just a seat, in fact, or stoop reduced to just a seat. In brief, a seat that's only a step not taken, one's feet planted firmly on ground. Moreover, B and B beside each other see to themselves to typify the difference between floor and tier as one of scale and scale scaffold. B flat and not sums up in human music, shifting earth, solid states dissolving into middle stages. Two, because and despite the dark ages of Ahalea, slow and fast moving waters deposit erosion and meander means down, south and sideways blues impulse, if not the blues of the current serpent serpentine heresies, the play of eddies and backwaters. Nothing escapes the black holes of Congo Square and Mecca but the breakdances of the prophets and the Amish parody of whirling dervishes. The Gregorian call to prayer frees jazz to over sky and under burka the middle left to board. Three, new arc. To stand in short behind a throne as nomadic camels kneel into neighbors and contagion marked as neighborhood takes root and roots beget rumors of trunks at first, the trunk at last at bottom tree. To return to forests hidden from the eye is thus to see invisible ink streaming across a scroll of upheaval, branches as the upper promise of roots and stars cast as site-specific installations mean jihadist texts v jihadist contexts. B, says B, rising to his feet, time to step off, and off he goes, a tangent to the scaffold and his ground, 
a third way of many ways, mass crusader, the hijab in his wake, a repurposed cape. Sorry, I lost, where was that? <clears throat> so Samir Farouk is a Toronto-based artist um, who another friend of mine told me about. I was became very interested in his work. <clears throat> um, and, but one of the things he, he um, did was uh, write a book about his art and about his philosophy of art called the speculative archive. Um, and in that book, he makes the distinction between what he calls the speculative archive as opposed to the bully archive. And by bully archive, he means the, um, the institution, the museum, the library in which history um, and aesthetic values are imposed upon people. So, Inspired by that, I wrote um, this. So this is, uh, I think, two or three poems in succession, but they're all called the Bully Archive. And this is dedicated to Samir Farouk. <clears throat> the everyday resurrections of the dead and living, not unlike invisible ships growing smaller and larger, as they sail into the glass bottles of open seas. Buying the book and beyond divided by commerce equals toe tags carry the taglines to market function irreducible to readings of the visible scene. And the voices thrown overboard, nay over body, born as mistresses upon the ways they will never master utter currency of offshore arrears. Thus exchange times the long division of geography, trade the remedy for accumulation of unique copies. Vatimar, for instance, is and isn't Mr. Alexander, the hand in the hand inside the dummy, the scandal of cadaver lingua franca, a cry swept down river dragged forth drowned voice, a drift at sea for years before washing up, on the banks of New England. Here, Vatimar and Mr. Alexander find himself writ large in uplift schemes, con games, and brutish cacophonies, a dumb collection of semi-ingenious vessels, each a noble homo erectus, if not mercator sapien, much less noblemen. Here, a voice can find a mouth can offer to trade, quote, a cast of the Venus de Milo, quote, for an alligator, a bulldog, or a rattlesnake. But V's appeal, eclipsed by M's showmanship, can only raise an eyebrow or two, American hands shoved deep into pockets far from French lapels. Hence, Mr. A goes before to prepare and condense an alphabet of omegas to raise Montreal as Boston, as Boston was to be a Paris, to scream V as V screams A, each scene blocking the scene, quote, two visages under one hood, three facades, an institute, a society, a library, to be folded into one containment policy but for the union of the territories into Canada, one preemptive lumping engulfing another as the sans serif of laissez-faire logoria and actuarial architecture. The Bully Archive. The everyday resurrections of the dead and living, not unlike invisible ships growing smaller and larger as they sailed into the glass bottles of open seas, buying the book and beyond divided by commerce equals toe tags carry the taglines to market function, irreducible to readings of the visible scene. And the voices thrown overboard, nay, over body, 
born as mistresses upon the ways they would never master, utter currency of offshore arrears. Thus exchange times the long division of Adam, trade the remedy for accumulation of unique copies, not unlike the flag taxonomies of Linnaeus and, Gray, and Gay, against which an onomatophile and splitter Raffines, late of the Ottoman Empire, Italy and France, a refugee lawyer only to the great laws, symmetry, per perpetuation, diversity, instability, divines the principle of deviation, no nomenclature can arrest its pursuit of sheer proliferation, no eye can comprehend in its headlong hurry to see itself before and after the interloping intercessors, mirror, ocean, woman, etc. to say nothing of light, air, Raffiness arrives at the sound, shipwrecked, half drowned, destitute, abandoned, quote, the deceit of women. And then a savior, John Clifford, raises him like a prodigal adopted son, a professorship, respect, however begrudging, of his peers, a man among men, kin exchanged for kith, as he names begotten generations of reproductions index gain and loss, algebra for numbers, the reductive le legacy of a Renaissance man born centuries too late. And so a naturalist fit for keeping the books of nature, accounting for what passes, for not unlike the African in the fit of birth pangs, the Negro wailing and gurgling as she emerges from her cis womb, awash in amniotic loss. And then the final one, the Bully Archive. The everyday resurrections of the dead and living, not unlike invisible ships growing smaller and larger as they sail into the glass bottles of open seas, bind the book and beyond divided by commerce, equals toe tags, carry the taglines to market, function irreducible to readings of the visible scene. And the voices thrown overboard, nay, over body, born as mistresses upon the ways they will never master, utter currency of offshore arrears. Thus exchange times the long division of toil, trade the remedy for accumulation of unique copies. Upright between the bookends of a century, a book of matches cannot be opened by the tap tap of a cigarette against the back of the other hand, as the palliative luxury of tobacco leaves unfalling in a garden among the fields, supplant the dream of work after labor, when we will roll our own or buy them from a church front pharmacy. We may or may not own the smoke of East smokes stream live from the exhaust pipes of nostrils as hands uncup and veil dropped blow away like dreams woke. The great god Grum Gumby sighs with, with pleasure and relief against the white pages of his scrapbook of Negroana, would-be tear sheets. There are only clippings of boxers, writers, politicians, etc. while barbers, bellhops, butlers, porters, and postal clerks never written up remain not unlike Gumby, Alexander, the smart dumbness of consummate, unconsummating men, palmed and fingered hither dither by husbands and wives, leftovers reserved for a future catalog called Feast of Scraps. Thanks. Thank you, Tyrone. Thank you, Tyrone. And thank you, Pupe. Wonderful readings this evening. Tomorrow night, um, we will have the final faculty reading, Dow Strom, Sarah Jaffe, and myself, Jay Ponteri. We'll see you at National Gallery or online. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>